KPMG South Africa CEO Trevor Hull, two senior executives and five partners have resigned. This follows an external audit of the firm's work for Gupta-linked businesses and the South African Revenue Service. Among other things, the auditing firm's accused of helping one of the companies divert public money to pay for a family wedding at Sun City. The firm says it's earned 40 million rand from Gupta-related entities since 2002. It's offered to donate the sum to education and anti-corruption non-profit organizations. KPMG has also offered to repay a further 23,000 to SARS. This is the amount it was paid for the report on the revenue services so-called rogue unit. CEO at Pan-African Capital Holdings, Iraj Abedian, says he's happy with the resignations. I feel uh, definitely vindicated. That has been my po position that uh, KPMG at the top level, uh, all their executives, and as a company, they have been complicit in corruption and abuse of public uh, public funds, uh, massive amounts. So it's the fact that they have resigned, they've admitted guilt. Um, it's a good start, and I feel quite happy about that and never vindicated. So now the next step is they need to be charged for the criminal activities, and the company has to pay back the charges. Abedian says KPMG needs to be held accountable for the damage it's caused. They have cost South African taxpayer billions and billions of rand in loss and credibility and economic uh, performance and employment and everything. So I think much like uh, Bill Pottinger, KPMG needs to not only go under, but they need to pay back some of the damages that they've caused on the society and on the economy. Let's get a bit more detail on the story. We're joined by Amabungani investigative journalist Craig McCune from Cape Town. Craig, thanks so much for your time today. Just please take us back, first of all, to how this relationship between the Gupta family and KPMG was further cemented by the Gupta wedding. Yes, back in yeah, back a few years ago, the the Free State government gave gave a Gupta company, although they said it wasn't a Gupta company at the time, but it was. We now know they gave they gave a Gupta company a bunch of money, um, a few hundred million, to develop a, a dairy in the Free State that was supposed to develop uh, poor farmers there. Um, the Guptas laundered this money offshore through Dubai and brought it back to South Africa where it landed with a company called Linkway, which was audited by KP KPMG. Um, and we did an article on that after the, the Gupta leaks broke. We, we, we traced this, this, this route of the money and we, we, we showed how, well, uh, money that was, in, that was supposed to, to, to benefit poor farmers instead went on to pay for the Gupta's wedding. And we asked serious questions of KPMG because uh, you know, alongside the fact that they were, were auditing this company that received the money, um, they were attending the wedding, they were sending, frankly, sycophantic emails to, to Atul, or I think it was AJ Gupta, saying thank you very much for the wonderful wedding. So the, the, the tone of the communications, it wasn't just that, there were a few, few other communications, was, was, was very close and cozy. And in the audit of, of Linkway, we, we highlighted what looked like some, some serious problems and places where we think they should have been able to spot that there was trouble. They they might not have known that this was money laundered from his, from the dairy project, but we would have, we they would have been able to tell that there was trouble. So that was that was the story that we did that really sp sparked an outcry. Now, but you know that's just one on top of layers and layers. Of course, former KPMG CEO, uh, CEO Moses Hassana insists all he ever did was attend that Gupta wedding uh, in the interests of of maintaining that business relationship and write them an email, albeit a gushing email, to thank them for hosting him and his family afterwards. But was his relationship with the Guptas really that benign? Um, well, yes and no. You see, you see, KPMG said it themselves in in, in their in their findings, which are, they released today, that the that a, a, an auditor such as them is supposed to have a level of professional skepticism. That that's their job. So there's no there's no evidence here. We're, we're not we're not accusing KPMG of being corrupt. Nobody accused them of, of doing anything necessarily illegal in, in that case. But did they ask the right questions? They they they're auditors. They're one of the big big four audit firms that off, that that um, occupy a very special place in our in our society where they're supposed to be watchdogs of how of how money is spent and or how 
how, how companies account for how, how their money is, is spent. And that has, has all sorts of out, outflows into society, the importance of that role. And if they don't ask proper questions, if, they, if, they're, not, if they're not skeptical of the information that they're given by management of companies, especially companies that are managed by people like the Guptas, then they're not doing their job. Is, is that directly corrupt? May, maybe not. Um, but they are facilitating the corruption. They're providing a cover for it where, where the Guptas can stand back and say, oh, but our, but our, our company reports are, you know, they're, they're, they're signed off by our auditors, everything's above board, and it's fine. But actually it's not because the auditors looked away. So, so let's, and, let's and Moses, to answer your question, Moses Hosanna was in charge of the company that, that was, was operating in this way and, and engendering this, this kind of a culture. And it went down to the, the senior audit partner in, in, in charge of the account. Um, and, and it goes across to, to the, the, the SARS report. And we can look at net one and, and reports that they did for, their, for, for them too. And Moses Hosanna was in charge of KPMG whilst it was looking away. Uh, Craig, I want you to talk us through the details of this uh, SARS intelligence unit report briefly because th there were major political consequences there. Yes, I think that's, that's one, of the, one of the very, very serious things here. Um, in 2014 and 2015, KPMG was hired by the South African Revenue Service um, by Tom Moyani, the, the current commissioner, to investigate allegations that there was an intelligence unit within the Revenue Service that was acting in a rogue manner, that they were acting illegally, that Praveen Gordon knew about it and you know, was, was responsible for it. Um, and you know, KPMG did an investigation and they made findings and recommendations. Um, and their, their investigation was, was problematic and their findings were problematic. They, they admit that themselves. They, they basically cop copied and pasted findings given to them by SARS's lawyers. Um, they suggested indeed that Praveen Gordon should have known about this unit and that, that it was a problem. But, but that now they're saying, well, actually, that, that's not necessarily the case and, and we're, we're, we're sorry, Praveen. And the, and the impacts of that have been huge. It's, it, it led to... Um, the, the removal of, of very senior and important people at the South African Revenue Service. It, it was used as the fuel to drive a hit on, on certain people in, in the ANC and in government, including Praveen Gordon. Um, and it, it, it's this report provided by a firm such as KPMG that is supposed to be credible was, was used to, to support and buttress a political campaign. Craig, I've got to ask you one last quick, quick question. Given the scale of the damage you've just described, should KPMG simply, rather than being allowed to, to return the money, it says it accrued from, from these deals, should it be prosecuted? I don't know. Um, you, you know, we should we should also also be cognizant that it's, it's not only KPMG were, were were a major facilitator of that action, but they weren't the the primary perpetrator. They were used, and once again, they they looked away and did a did a did a shoddy job that allowed the perpetrators to to do that. But should is that they really be true prosecuted? The SARS I, I, I don't know. If I may come in there, Craig, is that really true of mm. the SARS report, where I important information led to all sorts of machinations in government? Um, look, I'm not. I'm not a lawyer. I. I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I mean, it did. It did lead to those machinations. It did have that impact. What's the complicity of of, of KPMG in in that case? The the point where they copied and pasted findings findings given to them by SARS's lawyers. So that's by top, the people representing Tom Moyani, who who is, sits in in one political faction. Um, that looks that looks like a serious problem to me. Um, yeah, I think I think I think they should should be answering some serious questions, but I'm not I'm not I'm not going to say that they should should be prosecuted. I'm not a lawyer. I do, just don't know. All right, but you've given us a lot of insight into that story, and thank you for your time today. I'm a Bongani investigative journalist, Craig McCune.